Hey guys, welcome to another installment of my ongoing series of predictor restoration tips. This one's going to be a little bit different. And by that, I mean I don't have a good answer for you. Well, I should say I have a technique. What am I talking about? The screen covers, the dreaded 21 inch predictor screen covers. Why are they dreaded? Well, Here's an example of one I picked up recently that I want to clean. They get cloudy over time, and they smell over time. Why? Because of the material they're made out of, which is a type of plastic in the called butyrate, um, also known as tenite. Uh, it's made out of cellulose and some chemicals and it decomposes over time. It's the same stuff they make screwdriver handles out of. You may have opened up a toolbox that's been sealed for a long time and you get kind of a vomit smell. Same deal. Why did they use this stuff? Because it's tough. It's not hard per se, but it's pretty tough stuff. Uh, that's why they use it for screwdriver handles and other tools. It's also optically clear. But unfortunately, because it's made out of organic stuff, cellulose, paper, fiber, uh, it decomposes. I don't know exactly what the process is. Perhaps there is some type of mold or bacteria involved. Perhaps it will also decompose even in the absence of that just over time because it's an unstable material. What I do know is your storage condition does seem to have an impact. Heat and humidity seem to, or at least humidity seems to accelerate the process. The worst one I've ever seen was stored in a damp basement for many, many years. Uh, absolutely horrible. However, I've also seen some that are amazingly uh, clear and in good condition. In fact, the early television museum has one. They have a tandem set. The screen just looks like it was just made. I don't know. Now, I'm going to show you a simple uh, way to clean it that minimizes any chance of uh, damaging it. But there are many ways, many techniques to do it. Um, I'm not saying this is the best, this is just how I do it. As far as preventing this from coming back, I've heard a lot of theories, a lot of ideas. I've never tried any of them, so I cannot recommend any of them to you. There's been talk about using wax. There's been talk about clear coating it. I don't know. I have not tried it. I don't know if you can seal it from the environment and that will eliminate the problem. Uh, my concern would be, well a couple concerns if you spray something on this, one, whatever solvent or carrier medium is in whatever you're spraying on might react with the plastic and cause problems. Or this problem might happen sealed underneath your clear coat and then you have a layer of it that you can't clear off without taking off all the clear coat. Now, one technique I know a lot of guys use, I've tried it a little bit, um, is to use uh, headlight polishing kits, uh, especially if it's really bad. My one thing I would caution you on that is the, the one kit that I've tried from 3M, the coarsest uh, grit is way too aggressive. The plastic they use on headlight covers is really hard, tough stuff. This is not that hard. This is like, uh, uh, I forget what, let's say it's 220 grit sandpaper, something like that. It's really too aggressive, unless you've got some deep scratches or flaws in this that you want to sand out. But in, in the case of this one, it's just kind of cloudy. I don't think there's any scratches or anything like that. So I don't want to be that aggressive. So if you were to buy a headlight uh, cleaning kit and you've got a cover in this condition, I would skip the first few steps. Um, now some of those involve using a motorized tool, like a, a, a buffing wheel you can put onto a motor, uh, a drill. And you put on a buffing compound, you get a, 
a pad that attaches to your drill when you're going around. Yes, absolutely it saves time, gives you great results. However, one thing to be cautious about is these covers do have an embossed logo. Some at the top, some at the bottom. If you uh, use something aggressive, you can sand that right out. And you probably don't want to do that. Uh, I've heard one uh, gentleman put a piece of tape over that while he used his motorized uh, polishing pad and it was able, he was able to protect it. Um, but what we're going to do today, so I especially just want to know, I just picked this up recently, last weekend. I think it's defect free, I don't know because it's so cloudy. I just want to clear some of this off so I can see if there's any cracks in it or not. And I'm going to do that simply with Novus number no. 2, that's a plastic polish. It's a fine abrasive material, there's nothing magical about it really, it's, it's a little bit finer grit than say baking soda. Uh, and we're going to use a microfiber cloth. I get them in cheap packs uh, from Amazon. Well, there's any significance to the color, so we're just going to take one of these out. Hey, get out of here. Try to keep the dogs away. They're very interested in what's happening. Uh, if you've never used this before, it's just kind of a thick goo. It's similar to scratch remover, um, automotive like scratch X, which you could also use to do this. But this is a little bit more aggressive. Let's put a glob on there. And uh, start smearing it around. This one, I think the interior surface is actually worse than the exterior. And that's a drag. Uh, because that means if you want to clean it, you have to take it off the set, which is not the easiest thing to do. It's also, especially you can kind of see marks here, they shrink over time. So as they're decomposing or getting moldy or whatever chemical process is happening, they're also losing volume. And you can notice uh, ones that are really bad, they are visibly are less wide and tall than the, the back cover. But that, what that also means is they can start touching the glass CRT behind it and you can see marks start to form on this. That's from the plastic touching the glass behind it. If you adjust all the mounting hardware you can get a little bit of separation back to prevent that from happening. So that actually got a lot of crud off. I think most of what we're seeing is on the inside. So, so um, that car wax buff on, let it dry a little bit to a haze, and then buff it off. Uh, I'll clear the rest of this off and flip this over, we'll do the inside. Well, it turns out that this is actually a little worse than I realized. It almost looks like somebody did try to clear coat this with something. Uh, so I'm actually... Polishing it did get some off, but I almost have to scrape... <laughs> Some crud off. So maybe this somebody did put a layer of wax or something on this. I don't know. Well, let's uh, flip to the inside for a bit. Uh, this is definitely just uh, decomposed tenite. Uh, so let's uh, try the Novus again on this surface. Uh, now one, some advice I can give you is once you can't have cleaned it. Well, on the positive side, it took 63, 64 years to get to this condition. So once you do clean it, uh, generally with just a little bit of light cleaning, like once a year or so, uh, it'll stay looking good. And as far as the odor goes, I found this product, Plexo, has a nice scent to it. And it... Uh, is cleaner as well so spray this on every few months once a year basically there there is no uh, no more odor so that's a good thing uh, the oldest one I have I cleaned probably 10 years ago uh, and yeah some of this whiteness did come back uh, but periodic cleaning takes care of it hasn't been a big deal
the worst thing again is if you have to take uh, take this off to clean the inside uh, after you've cleaned it once. Uh, that's, that's the most annoying task. <laughs> These do have a tint to them, so I mentioned it was clear. It's clear, but uh, they did intentionally, I believe, add a tint to it to reduce glare or something like that. Also heard some speculation about the original color of these, that it may have changed over time. I don't know. Every one I've seen is basically this color, kind of this olive color. Uh, and that's what it looks like on the inside on every one of these I've ever taken apart. And if you abrade this a bit, uh, remove a little bit of the layer, that, that's the color all the way through. I really don't think it's oxidized or anything. I think that that's that's the color it was so it's reverse painted this kind of greenish color and then when it goes through the tinted plastic it ends up being sort of an olive green I think that is period correct so we're getting there we're getting near the inside it's cleaned up pretty easily it's, it's getting a lot more transparent but yeah this outer uh, I almost wondered, did somebody spray clear coat, or is that just a heavy layer of wax? I don't know. I've never seen anything quite like that. <laughs> Go figure the video. I, I try to record a video showing you what a typical one looks like, and I get an atypical one. What's typical is what I just did on the inside, where this is actually pretty, pretty clean now. Typically two or three passes of the Novus will take pretty good care of any crud that's on this. And you can use it on the painted areas too, which yeah, it can get kind of moldy and cruddy too. This is especially bad down here. This makes me think that some moisture might have gotten inside of this cover. So, yeah, obviously we can't see clearly through it, so I, uh, I need to do a few more passes, but that's, that's the basic idea. I, again, I'm not a fan of the motorized buffing tools. Just in general, I don't like using power tools around uh, vintage stuff or antiques, but yeah, it absolutely does speed up the process. Uh, so... Uh, Use it at, at your discretion. But as far as the uh, abrasive material to use, I find Novus Number 2 is just my go-to, whether it's Bakelite or plastic, Titanite or acrylic, this stuff works really well. Huh, as I clean around the perimeter of this, well, maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe the original color was more greenish because certainly where it was covered up by the metal band that holds this to the back cover it is distinctly more greenish than this olive color so maybe there is something to that that's, that's what I find interesting about this stuff the detective work <sighs> we'd have to find somebody who was around uh, 60 years ago uh, and saw one of these that were new and remembers what the color was or get a high quality color photo of uh, what they looked like when they were new uh, both of which are kind of a, a, a reach um, but that that's interesting so that's one of the topics that came up about getting reproductions of these made is what color should they be what they were maybe originally or what they look like now that people are used to. So let's say originally they were bright green and we had reproductions made that were bright green and we tried to market them, people would say, that looks nothing like what they're supposed to look like. I'm not gonna pay for that. Who knows, who knows? That's a tough call to make. It's been about 15 minutes and we're getting there. We're getting there. We're starting to get some definite optical clarity. I uh, just so want to point out a few other products you could use. Kitsch 
scratch out uh, Aguirre Scratch X 2.0. Uh, there's also a Novus 3, which they say is for heavier scratches. I haven't noticed a huge difference, but you could certainly try that. Uh, Meguiar's Plast X. Uh, I'd say this is for more finer uh, work than uh, some of these others. Uh, but basically automotive products work well on this stuff. Yeah, so well, let's let's give some scratch out a little try here. I uh, got the inside pretty well done. Still working on the outside. It's, it's worse than I realized when I first started. Uh, still haven't quite determined if that is uh, just a thick layer of crud built up, or if just somebody tried putting something on it. I did try once putting wax on it, the car wax or some such, and it was a disaster. <laughs> I gotta say, uh, it was. It looked like it was Vaseline smeared all over it. Um, so I'd be very curious if anybody out there. Uh, this is definitely I, I would love to hear from folks. Not so much about cleaning it. I, I've heard plenty of that, and yes, uh, basically any fine abrasive with a soft pad will work but uh, i'm curious to hear about anybody who has any long time uh, experience with a coating of some sort and whether or not it uh, well one did it go on and leave you with a clear screen and two over time did it help or or what One nice thing about all these car products too is they all kind of smell nice. They <laughs> have a bit of a scent, so when you're done, they'll have a little bit of a nice lingering scent to them. Instead of that. I mean, already, so this, when I first took this off, it smelled. It's gone. It's completely gone. The smell goes away with the stuff that you remove. That's one good thing. It's not the clean plastic that smells, it's that oxidized crud layer that smells. One thing I have is if you leave this on a little too long and let it really dry out, it's kind of hard to get off. Uh, but if you uh, put a little bit of fresh uh, material on there, or maybe even use a damp rag, probably uh, would help too to just get it off. Right, let's buff this out and see how we are doing now. All together, this will probably take me about half an hour. For the final pass, I will definitely use uh, Novus Number Two or or McGuire's Plastax. They both uh, are good for the final pass. Oh, yeah, it's looking a lot better now. I got a pack of these uh, on Amazon Prime Day. I think it was a couple bucks for a dozen or something like that. Oh yeah, we're definitely getting there. And uh, it uh, sure looks defect free to me. This can crack like it's more fragile cousin the 17 inch ones which use a polycarbonate or something like that uh i tried uh to repair a crack this will dissolve an acetone but as far as like wicking it into a crack and thinking it'll weld itself and the crack will disappear no no not at all uh, there are ads from the, the back in the day, Eastman, which is still in business, made this, and they ran in ads. They were proud of this product. Um, 
there is a bit of a, an effort that myself and others are involved in in getting reproductions made. Uh, these were injection molded. We're not going to be 3D printing them or vacuum forming them. They need to be injection molded. The setup fees are not inconsiderable. Um, but if we get enough of a backing, it's, it's, it is possible someday we can get reproductions made. It's really a matter of supply and demand. Uh, but also, I personally would pay a premium to never have to do this again. <laughs> so not just a matter of re replacing one that's damaged, but just replacing one that's good so I never have to clean it again and there's no odor. Uh, that's very appealing. <laughs> If good reproductions are made that, that look close enough to the original. Just about done. Maybe one more pass and I call it done. No, it's not 100% perfect. There are some scuffs here and there that uh, I need to get a bit more aggressive. Maybe wet sand to get them out. But... I really don't think they would be noticeable when watching this on a set. And it's certainly considerably better than it was when we started. So pick your poison. I switched between all these products. I couldn't really say one works any better than any other. Basically any fine abrasive will do. Especially ones that are designed for plastic. Uh, one final thing, I'll give you a little demo of what uh, this Plexo is like. Shake up the can, it's an aerosol, comes out, uh, foams a bit, and uh, take a clean cloth and wipe it off. It smells nice, does a good job cleaning it, leaves a little bit of a shine to it. Hit up your set periodically and it will be odor free, at least that's been my experience. So. I hope you found these tips useful. Uh, I really look forward to some feedback and hear uh, your thoughts, suggestions on, uh, especially if any of you have uh, tried to seal this with wax or clear coat or anything like that. Uh, but otherwise, basically elbow grease or power tool and a fine plastic abrasive and have at it. Thanks for watching.